In this video, we have the integral of 1 over 1 minus sine of x to evaluate. And remember, if you, if you have trouble determining what approach to take, remember you can always simplify the integrand if possible, factor it, reduce it, multiply the numerator and denominator by some the same expression. Maybe it'll give you another option to use. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 plus sine of x, which is the conjugate of what I have in the denominator. And that's always allowed because all I'm doing is multiplying by 1. 1 plus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x is equal to 1. You multiply an expression by the number 1, you haven't changed it. 1 times 3 is still 3. 1 times 10 is still 10, and so on. So that's always legal. So obviously in the numerator, 1 times 1 plus sine of x is going to be 1 plus sine of x. In the denominator, I had the difference and the sum of 1 plus of uh, 1 and sine. 1 minus sine of x, 1 plus sine of x. So that's just going to be 1 minus sine squared of x. And you have this. Now we also know that cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared at the same angle is equal to 1. So that means that if I take this over, I'm using C in for cosine and S for sine just to abbreviate here. So this would tell me then that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. I can make this equal to, or set this equal to then, 1 minus sine squared is the same thing as cosine squared, using that fundamental identity. And then I've got the 1 plus sine of x. So I wind up with this integral here, the integral of 1 plus sine of x over cosine squared of x. And then we can simplify this somewhat here. So let's do this. Uh, 1 over 1 over cosine squared is the same thing as secant squared. Okay? 1 over cosine squared is the same thing over it's the same thing as secant squared of x because well, cosine and secant are reciprocals. And then on this one over here. I'm going to break this up. So as I'm doing, I'm just dividing the numerator by cosine squared. So it's 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. We write, we, we write that using your uh, basic trig identities. And then this one I'm going to break up into 2. So this would be sine of x over cosine of x. And then this is times 1 over cosine. But 1 over cosine is secant of x. Okay, so sine over cosine squared can be written as sine over cosine of x times secant of x. But sine over cosine is tangent of x. So this is tangent of x. And then again it's times secant of x. And I can rewrite this as two integrals. But let's just go through term by term and just do it this for a second. What's the, what's the integral of secant squared? In other words, what trig function has a derivative of secant squared? Well, that's one you should know. That's tangent of whatever the angle is. In this case, the angle is x. So I have that. Then it's plus. What trig function has a derivative of tangent of x, secant of x, or the other way around, secant of x, tangent of x? That's one, again, that you should know. It's secant of x. Derivative of secant is tangent of x, secant of x. Or you can also say secant of x, tangent of x. And then it's plus the constant of integration. And that's the answer to this one.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.